In this video, we're going to continue our Church Unified Network install by setting up a virtual server for our controller. Hey guys, this is AJ, the CEO. If this is your first time stopping by the channel, thanks for stopping by and on this channel. We focus on tips, training, strategies, reviews, and bills to help modernize your media ministry. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. So I'm here at my church, and what I wanna do is actually walk you through the more complex way of setting up a unified controller, but it won't cost you anything. So let me go ahead and cut over to the computer. Now this computer, has nothing so this is going to be a good example of starting from zero all the way to completion on how to get a unified controller up so again i gave you warning this is probably going to be the more technical part of anything that i have done here on this channel so um i'm gonna try and leave as many details as possible in the description as well as on my website ajhomes.com with a full breakdown of all the steps to do this stuff all right we're gonna go through each one so this is the server so let's go to the computer so i'm here on the desktop here and now there are a couple of things that are needed to do this so the first thing is you need to verify if your computer is capable of even doing this, which is pretty much talking about, does your processor allow you to handle virtual machines? And the easiest way to do that is to go to this website, and I've actually recommended this before, um, cpuid.com, and you can go ahead and click on CPU-Z to download that, which actually I already have on this computer. <laughs> All right. So this is gonna give you a breakdown of what is available for your processor. Now, I have a Ryzen 3 inside the system, and for the Ryzen brand, or for, I believe, the other um, older AMD processors, AMD-V is the code to say that it can support running virtual machines. Um, so let's look that up just to make sure. Yeah, so that's AMD virtualization. So when it comes to Intel's processors, you would have an Intel logo here and inside of the instructions, you will see VT um, for virtualization. VT, I think, hyphen X or something like that. So that's what we're showing here. That's what the prerequisite is needed first before you can actually do this in any way, shape or form. So I am good. So now what we're gonna do is go to virtualbox.org and we're going to download our virtual box now um, there are other ways to do this but this is just going to be the way i'm doing it let's go to <coughs> downloads here and this can run on mac linux windows i'm on a windows system so i'm going to head and download that now you need an operating system so i'm going to use linux because i can download this for free and we'll go ahead and download 18.04.2 because that is the LTS version, long-term support version right now. Um, so let's go ahead and download that, all right? So now while this is running, let's go ahead and launch the VirtualBox. All right, let me move this over here so we can see. And it's pretty straightforward. We're just gonna next do pretty much everything. Um, you can check this stuff off if you want to. Because again, this is the church's computer. I'm gonna uncheck this stuff. I just want it on the desktop for me. All right. It gave a little warning there for a second that it will disconnect the network for a second while it's doing its install, which is fine. All right. We got the little pop up here. Yes, I'm gonna install that. And that's just gonna be a module to let you use your current networking for your computer to get the server to act like it's on the network. All right, so we'll finish and we'll start it. All right, so here we go. Pretty straightforward. Now my download for Ubuntu is done as well too. So I'll have access to that. So let's go ahead and set up the server. So we're just gonna click on new, give it a name. So I'm gonna call it Unify VM 
and what type it is Linux and it's gonna be Ubuntu 64-bit all right next how much memory I'm just gonna use uh, two gigabytes um, then next create a virtual hard drive yes doesn't matter which one so I'm just gonna keep the top option do I want it to dynamically grow? No. I'm gonna keep it fixed at 10 gigabytes. To create, give it a little time to create that file. Mm -hmm. All right, everything is done. So now let's come back in here to settings. And now we need to point it to our network so that it can connect to everything. So we're gonna network, we're gonna go to bridged adapter, pick your networking controller. And I don't know why there are so many here. So now let's go to storage and under our CD drive, we're gonna mount our ISO of the Linux operating system that we just downloaded. So let's go there choose virtual disk file and there's ours that we downloaded and we'll click OK now that's it so let's go ahead and get this thing started all right so now we're just going to be going through the install just as if you were actually installing this on real hardware All right, so now we're just gonna go through and it's gonna be installing this at the same time while we're picking this. So let's just pick our language, done. Yes, I wanna install Ubuntu. It picks an IP address that it's gonna be using. That's fine, done. Are you using a proxy address? No, just do done. Pick the archive, the top one is fine. I wanna use the entire disk and set up LVM. So we pick that, enter. That's the hard drive, the virtual hard drive that we made, enter. Done. Do you wanna continue? Yes. Now you're gonna put in your name, server name, pick a username and a password. Done. Install OpenSSH, yes. Click that and then done. Skip through all of this stuff. We don't need any of those other things. Get done. And that's it. And now we're just gonna let the system finish installing. And then once it's done, we will be able to move forward from there. So now while that is going on, what I'd like you also to do is just go into Google and search for Putty and that is a free SSH and Telnet client. Go there and go ahead and download this. Get the latest version, 64-bit most likely. Um, you'll know if you need to, if it, that doesn't work, but just pick the 64-bit. All right, and that's the installer, or you can just pick just the app by itself. So I'm actually just gonna do the app by itself. All right. And that's the app. So we're just gonna keep that up for right now because this is gonna make this easier for when we start using this stuff. All right. Another thing that we can do to start getting prepped for this is go to the link of ui.com slash download, which is Unify's download site for their software. And we're gonna go to Unify now we're not gonna be physically downloading anything. Um, that's the beauty of using Linux. It's gonna actually pull this down for us ourselves. But what I want to do is actually go here and where is it at? Unify controller. Yeah, so here I wanna actually go to download release notes. And 
And then for Debian, Ubuntu users installing the repo, we're gonna click here. Because this document <clears throat> is gonna guide us through everything we need to do to get the stuff installed. And the reason I'm using PuTTY is PuTTY will allow you to highlight and copy and paste this into the commands to send to the server instead of having to type all this stuff out. All right. So what I'm going to do is move this to the side so I can have both of these at the same time. Well, actually, it's going to actually be PuTTY is going to be here. So that's fine. All right. So we're just going to let that finish up. It's installing OpenSSH. All right, it's all done. We're gonna click on reboot now and just hit enter. All right, that's gonna say, please remove the medium, which is fine because it is, just hit enter. All right, it's all coming up. And this is the only interface you're really gonna see from the virtual server. It's just a straight server with nothing but text. All right, so it's gonna put some extra stuff up here. Don't worry about that. What I want you to do is type in the username that you made and the password that you set. And now you're logged in. Now I'm gonna type the word clear. Well, as you can see, it's a bunch of packages that need to be updated, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. Let's type the word clear to get rid of all of that. So now what we're gonna do is type I-F-C-O-N-F-I-G, if config, and we're looking for the IP address, which is right here, 192.168.1.148. All right, now let's type the word exit, and boom, now we're logged back out. Let's minimize this. Now back in PuTTY, if you had this open, we're gonna put that IP address in. And click open. You will get a prompt like this. That means you're connected to it. Do you want to trust it? So say yes. And now PuTTY is connected to that server. So let's just make this big here. And I'm gonna log in the exact same way. All right, and we get the exact same information. All right, so now what we're gonna do is with this page, we're gonna start copying the commands to get Unify installed. So let's just copy this whole thing here and right click and it moves over. Enter, it's gonna ask for your password again. All right, that was the first command. Now we need to add our keys. So for Ubuntu 1804, run the following commands before installing um, in step four. So that's what we're on. So let's go ahead and copy this. Well, or click to copy. Right click. All right. It imported the key. And now it has a sudo um, apt update, which pulls down new updates for the system. Go ahead and hit enter. All right. So we're getting a message here that it couldn't verify. And that's fine. So let's go back here and get our next key. Actually, I'm gonna use method B here. Right click, enter. All right, so that's imported. Now it's a lot of stuff on here. So I'm gonna type clear to clear out everything again. Now we're gonna do another update. All right, no error because the code went through. And as you can see, this last line, there's where it pulled down Unify, get Unify Debian stable. All right, so now what we're gonna do, run this next command. All right, and now we're gonna finally start installing Unify which is this command, install unify. Do you want to continue? Yes. And that one command is installing everything that's needed to get this up and running. All right, that's it. 
So let's go ahead and type exit. That closes this. Now we're going to go back to our browser and we're going to type https colon slash slash the IP address 192.168.1.148 colon 8443. And this is a good message. We're going to go to advanced and proceed anyway. And we are now in the Unify Wizard running off of this virtual server that we just set up. All right, so we would just go through these steps and let's go ahead and set this up. So first off, I'm just gonna give you best practices that I use, but um, you know, every environment is different. So I'm gonna come in here, set, set my country, set my time zone, enable auto backups. All of this is by default and will pick up based on your current location, but just verify that so you can always change this if need be. If you had another system, you could restore a backup here if you wanted to from something that was already made, but we're gonna do that when we um, set up the Raspberry Pi as well as the Windows version. So this is gonna be our first. So let's go ahead and click next. If there were devices detected, they would show here. We don't, so let's do next. And you can set up your first Wi-Fi so what we're gonna do is just like we talked about in walking through we're gonna set that same thing up so in here we're gonna call this one prototype secure give it a passcode all right optionally you can create an open wireless network for your guests do you want to do that I'm gonna say no for right now because we're gonna come back and do that Let's do next, your username. I'm just gonna do AJ, email address, your password. And this is an auto-generated password, so you don't need to change this, just let it manage it. Also, um, this new version of Unify lets automatically optimize your network. It will make changes to get the best performance, just keep that enabled. All right, we go to next. There's a summary of everything, finish. Here you can put in your credentials if you have a cloud account, which I do. And now we are in the home page of Unify, so we're there. So again, everything is set up, you, but like I said, this server has to be running nonstop for this to work, all right? So inside of here, we have all the things there. So I hope that helps. That's how you can get this set up for pretty much for free as long as your computer supports virtualization. We downloaded everything and have this running and it didn't cost us a dime except for just a little amount of time. So if you found this video helpful, I'd appreciate a like, consider subscribing and hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos and we will be continuing this whole series on setting up a unified church network to help expand the abilities of your church from Wi-Fi, from a security standpoint, as well as to help lay the groundwork so we can have a more stable um, network when we're live streaming and doing the things that we do here in the church. This is AJ and we'll see you on the next video later.